The world of Alluren, a land promising adventure, treasure, and glory at every turn for all the many, many heroes that inhabit it. From the far reaches of the frozen fjords to the sweltering jungles of Ishtka, opportunity awaits for all those brave enough to seek it. And, oh, wait, who are you? Wait, wait, wait. <clears throat> However, we are not the heroes of this tale. So welcome to the Party in Peril Villains Campaign. <laughs> What the hell is this? Who stands here before Nate the Great? Oh boy. You foul creatures escaping the bowels of hell. How about you? You were probably going to go down there yourself, jerk. We were here on a quest. We were here on business. But you are villains. I am Nate the Great. I'm here to kill villains. This land is safe for villains. It's villains who rule here. You, sir, are on our territory. You are the outcast. I I don't think I am. I mean, all right. You and what army, Nate the Great? You know what, though? I, oh, you have touched a nerve, little fly. I'm not a fly. Zozo, you look like a fly to me. Are you still hungry? I- I'm I'm feeling pretty full, honestly, but you know what? Let me get a peek in on this one. Zozo's eye lights up, and he stares deeply at this guy standing before you, who is um, decked out in like fairly nice looking clothes for a human, uh, and a fairly tall human that stands before you a little bit in his like uh, twilight years a little bit of, of white in his hair and his beard but still even though his hair is slightly unkempt very close cropped beard very kept and even though the clothes are kind of nice and a little on the fancy side they're quite a bit well traveled and tattered and he does wear a little bit of leather armor kind of strapped over some of it he does hold himself with a sword and shield as a fighter y'all this man over here He fancies himself a hero, but, um, I think he's the only one that does. That sounds about right. Would you say that he is a zero? Your puns will not save you, creature, even if they are painful. Hey, Nate, do you want to see more monsters? We're heading back home. Where is this back home? If I could kill several of you creatures, then maybe they will finally treat me like the hero I am. Sure, sure, yeah, you're, yeah, you'll get us, uh-huh. Speaking of, have you seen a statue that resembles me? I had a statue made long, long ago and tried to erect it in the uh, the local village. And whether it was a joke or not, they instead erected it somewhere in the forest out here. That was several years ago. I've been trying to locate it ever since. I suppose I was kind of rude, and you you may not want to answer that question, but maybe I won't kill you, should you answer me truthfully. So you're searching for your erection? (laughs) Are you making a penis joke at me, Nate the Great? If you consider yourself a penis, yes. I am not a penis, though I do (laughs) wear a magnificent helmet from time to time. That doesn't make sense to me, but... It wouldn't. You're a fly. Excuse me! You know me. nothing of helmets. You would have to have a tent somewhere back there with a journal. Have you been going through my tent? Perhaps I have. What are you going to do about it? I will find the largest fly swatter in the land. Do you need to find a fly swatter? At least I don't have to wear stuff over my body in order to protect myself. It's called clothes! I wear clothes. You're wearing extra clothes, which is just a wimp's way out. It's so I can kill more of your kind. It's so that you protect your non-existent junk. My junk is just, it's right here. Uh, Well, I'm wearing a codpiece. I can't get to it right now, but it's bigger than you. Your whole body. May may we consult for a second? Yes, Nate. Let let us have a, Uh, uh, a monster huddle first. Only monsters allowed. Have you never been in a fight before? That's not how fights work. Well, we're not in a fight because you're but, not a fighter, so just go away. But I, I have a sword and shield. That's 
Fine. No, no one rolled initiative. We are not yet in combat. All right, fine. <laughs> Do what you must. Okay, children, huddle up. All right, you guys huddle. Waslo thinks that there's a possibility we could lie to him and tell him his statue is down there where we saw that large creature. Perhaps it will have a good time snacking on poor Nate. That, that's a I good like idea. Plan. Tell him to look into the hole and we'll push him in. Oh, that's devious. I like it. We could push him down or we could lead him to the office and then we would bring Zozo as the monster and someone to torture. But then we would have to travel with Nate the Great the whole way home. That's and Waslo does not like this idea. He is annoying. He deserves to be in a hole. Zozo, what what do you think? You're one of us now. I don't want to intrude on y'all's party. I mean, I understand y'all been friends for some time, so I don't want to get in the way of y'all's process. But, uh, you know, I would defer to your judgment in this situation. I've never been up here before, so I don't know the ways of y'all's kind. You teach me your customs. You've been uh, imprisoned with one and a quarter of us before, so that does make you a member. What, is, what does that mean? I've been Im- I'm imprisoned and that makes me something? I don't know what y'all are talking about. Never, never you mind. We're, st- we're still figuring this out. Everyone for pushing Nate into the hole, say aye. Aye. You know, I, I agree. Well, well, I hope he's not like a, a lone ant where other greats like him other nathans will come are you saying like nate the great the second nate the great the third how popular is the name great nate the greater he is my first encounter yeah i've seen others like him before i i say i agree i i say he, he's getting restless i see him Waslo sees him spinning in circles we should act <laughs> soon this okay. one should be pretty easy let's push him down the hole all right and hey, uh, break l- Nate, come, yes, come closer. Yes, are you ready to have our battle? Uh, come, What's that? Come closer. Come cl- we, we can't hear you. You need to come closer to us. Is my voice not clear? No. I, I practiced this voice for quite a while. Your, your armor, your head armor is covering your mouth. We we need you close. Oh, Nate, uh, oh, we, I can take it off if that helps. We have a, a ritual prior to any- Nate pulls off any, his helmet. We, <laughs> yeah, is that better? We have a ritual prior to any battles where you must peer down into this hole, into the blackness, before we start our fight. Well, now that doesn't sound right. Uh, Len flies over to the hole and goes, Hey, I, 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 think I, see, I think I see a statue down there. Oh, I did see a statue down there. You're right. Okay, ro- Len, roll persuasion. <laughs> Six. Can I... Uh, can I uh, can I like assist that role? Or I have really good deception. If you guys would have called it first, I would have said yes. Uh, shite. But you guys, since you didn't plan that ahead of time, <laughs> I'm gonna say no. You're trying to get me to look down that hole. I will not be looking down any more holes today, good woman, fly woman, whatever hey, you are. Call me something that wasn't a fly. I don't think he's looked at holes in a while, anyways. I've seen more holes than than <laughs> than anyone else here. I bet. You just keep telling yourself. I've that. seen so many holes. Nate, that's just information we didn't want to know. Now, you want to see a uh, the real the good hole? <laughs> Are you coming on to me? <laughs> You're too small. It would rip you in twain. She does know about erections. I'm sure she will lead you to one. Is everything a dick joke to you, villains? Obviously. You are kind of funny. Wazla will be honest. You look like a giant penis. Yeah, funny <laughs> looking. That's very rude. Yeah, I've actually seen a lot of uh, your kind, but I mean, I hesitate to say that because, I mean, you just... You don't look like other greats, I guess, that are out there. Are you trying to antagonize? I already said I wanted to fight you. You don't have to keep being rude. Well, then come at us, buddy. More like Nate the Average. (laughs) All right, then. (laughs) It's time to battle. Roll initiative, everybody. Damn it. 18. Uh, 21. 22. Oh, oh, all right. Hey. Nate the Great. Nate the Great. (laughs) When um, Zozo starts seeing you guys, like, starting to get to do the battle, he's like, ooh, oh, now this is going to be real fun. He's like, come come with me, little trog. And he grabs the, the chain and just kind of backs <laughs> off towards the side. He's like, let's watch this play out. This is going to be a, this is going to be a real treat. So they're just kind of standing off in the corner. The first up is Lynn. Who, who goes after me? 
Lilith goes after you. Perhaps my first move will be to hover and try to antagonize him to come after me so that he starts moving towards me and towards the hole. So I like fly in his face and like poke him with my dagger. Fly up, stab him and fly away. Is that what you're going to do? Yeah. So he comes after me. So he gets closer to the hole so that Lilith can come up and just like push him in or wipe him with her tail. Okay. So you're going to use an action to, to, uh, you're going to use your movement. You're going to fly part way. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to do an attack and then fly away again. So yes, that is my plan. Okay, you fly over to him because your flight is 60 feet. So now you've flown 20, so you have 40 feet left. Do you want to roll for your attack? 18. That hits. Four. And then I fly away towards the hole. Lilith, you're up. Uh, How far away is he from me? 30 feet. Oof. I'd like to move up about 20 feet close to him. And then I would like to uh, spit... Poison. I got poison spray. Oh, okay. Bit in his face. Okay, so I do a con saving throw. Hey, Nate. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's yes. See what how- do you want? We're we're fighting. Do you just want to <laughs> talk? Is that what's going let's, on? Let's see how great you are when you're blind. I like to That's think rude. of you just like hawking it up, like yes. <laughs> <You're> like, That's <laughs> <laughs> that sounded ugly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna. Okay, so I do a Constitution roll, and what do I need to beat? Yeah, you uh, need to beat ten. So the acid nails him like right in the eyes. So now you roll one d twelve. Uh, three. Does that give him the poisoned effect or anything like that with that poison spray, or does it? Is it just the straight up damage? It just says it's instantaneous, so it's straight up damage. It's like shampoo in the eye. So, yeah, it's basically, it's like he gets shampoo right inside. He's like, ah, dang, it burns. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> Not so great after all. No, it sucks. All right, uh, <laughs> last Lowe's turn. Okay, while he's distracted like that, let me get beside Lilith right now because I'm going to do something that she can't be in the way of. Burning hands. I don't think I roll on this either. The deck saving throw of 13. So, okay. And it it goes for 15 feet in front of me. um, And it's in a cone. So uh, right now, where I'm at, it won't affect anybody else. Just be directed towards him. Oh, where's Len? She's behind us. I'm okay. Yeah, Yeah. I'm behind. He manages to dodge the burning hands. Okay. If he dodges on a failed save, uh, they take half as much damage. So I still do half damage to him. So how much damage? Uh, 3d6, let me roll it. So he takes three damage. Okay, so you need to roll a wild magic surge. No, seven. So you're good. How did that even work? I managed to dodge it, yet I still feel burned. I feel like that spell is OP. He's gonna charge at Lilith, who was the one that spit the the acid right in his eyes. He's gonna just swing with his, his little side sword here and make a melee attack against her. That is 20... Three total for hit, so I'm assuming I hit. That definitely hits. Eleven damage. How much HP do you have total? Well, I did have seventeen. Now I have six. Oh shit! <laughs> oh, you're gonna pay for it, that. It's uh, mm-hmm. Len's turn. I told you. I told you that you would you die, you foul, whatever you are. I do a sneak attack. Okay. Uh, to him with my dagger and so I'm going to actually just come up to the side of him to like the opposite side of where Le- where uh, Lilith and Waslow are so you're going to fight um, you're going to fight him from his uh, right or left I'm side I'm still trying to get him to get in the hole and I'm hoping that okay. if I hit him hard enough then it will disable him so that Lilith can just whip him in okay so you're going to try to fly around him to, Is the that si- basically- to the other side of yes with that you have advantage because you guys are flanking him now. 23. You definitely hit. Eight damage. And are you going to use your bonus attack and use your offhand? Yes. Okay. So you did a total of 12 damage. So Len is pissed. So she flies over, flies up behind him, just swipes right at the neck, uh, just aiming for the jugular with her dagger because she can get up to his neck that is exposed since he took his helmet off and just slices as much as she can and she pulls around the other side with her other dagger and also slices in order to disorient him towards Lilith and Laszlo. 
Nate the Great is now beyond bloodied and falls to his knees right then and there. And he's like, okay, okay. I apologize for any slights that I have put against you, especially you, Madam Fly. Please just let me live. I can make it worth your while. I promise. Please don't kill me. Oh, now it's Madam Fly. Yes, please. Just, just please let me live. I have so much to live for. I could be a great hero. I could be an asset to you. I know how to, uh, wh- what, what would you guys like? I can get you riches. I can definitely get you some riches or fame. I know how to do it. We do that pretty well. I just need own. to live. You had your chance to walk away. And now I know you- where the greatest amount of wealth is in this land. I you can tell you where it is. I can help you get to it. You don't is. Don't. It's in this. my pocket, I think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's in my cod piece. I, I, okay. Hold up a second. There is a, a human dwelling several miles from here. It has the greatest accumulation of wealth in this immediate area. I can get you in there. I will. I. They've done nothing for me but laugh at me. I can help you rob them blind. You will be the richest villains in this land. Just let me live, and I can help you do this. Now, where have we heard that before? I don't know. Not I, don't, you. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> How would I know? I can't read your minds. I don't know your history. I I'm don't trying trust to be helpful you. here. I don't trust anyone trying to kill me and my friends. I will never trust you. Now, now, let's hear him out. This sounds very tempting. He tried to kill you and almost killed me. But he didn't. By the way, I need you to do magic on me. <laughs> I am beat. <laughs> <laughs> Someone please tend to my wounds. <laughs> it hurts. Zozo, for one, you can see the uh, chain that he was holding um, the trog with over there um, is now just a chain w- attached to a skeleton, and he's picking <laughs> some trog out of his teeth. And he's like, y'all want some help over there? I could always try to read him again and see if he's telling the truth. You just let me know. Oh, sorry, I ate your trog. Sorry about that. That's okay. We're giving you a job anyways. Can you read him and tell us where it is? Yes, please. You can read him and, and eat him after if you want. So Zozo scurries over to him and kind of looks him in the eye. The The eye glows again. You can kind of see like a little bit of a uh, glow in the eyes of Nate the Great too, as Zozo is trying to read him. And you can see like tears even streaming down Nate the Great's face as his lip quivers. And you can see blood running down through his armor from the wounds that he has suffered at your guys' hands. All right. All right. I get it. I get it. Well, I can tell you all this. He's telling the truth. He he knows where uh, lots of, we can get lots of riches and all that. Now, here's the problem. He was hiding the location real good from me. So, I uh, guess what I'm saying is, he uh, he knows where it is, but I uh, couldn't get the location from him. So you take with that what you will. So we keep him alive, and he can take us to the encampment and help us get into it. And once we acquire the treasure, then we can do with him as we will. Why should we let you live, Nate? Because I said I could make you rich. I mean... I, that seems like a pretty good thing for, to me. I don't care for riches. I care oh. for justice. She, she doesn't speak for the rest of us. We care for riches. <laughs> yeah, I kind of, I'm a little, yeah, a little I, interested, I, actually. I figured, I mean, not to be racist or anything, but uh, looking at the lot of you, I figured you liked riches. I mean, you're kind of always, you know, killing and robbing and murdering for riches and things like that. Hoarding things in your dungeons? I just assume that's what you wanted. My kind is no longer. I bet. I mean, I, I kind of want the, the riches. <laughs> it's more classist than racist when you really break it down. Well, okay, that makes me feel a little bit better about it. Well, what if we bring him back? We put him in the iron bands of the, the those bandy things that the trog doesn't need anymore. 
we take him back to our place and you can torture him and then we can go get the stuff no. after we turn it after we bring Zozo back. Well now why would I want to help you if you're just going to torture me to death? If, if I'm gonna die anyway, I'm not gonna tell you where to go. Oh no, you're gonna live, but Lilith just gets to torture you first. I am bloody. You did this to me. I want justice. You spit acid in my face. You attacked I mean, what us kind of bitch first. move is that? Lilith, you can torture him to death after he brings us the treasure, and you can torture him beforehand, just not killing him. I mean, I can still hear you. That, I don't care. That's not much of a perk for you me. Have I'm not no talking say. to you. Well, that's rude. For you, children, we will get these riches, and I will get his head. Don't do it for us. Do it for the riches. <laughs> but I want to keep my head. I'm not going to help you if you're going to take my head. Well, would you rather die here? I'd rather not die at all, to well, be honest. Well, that's not an option, so deal with it. But, well, no! Someone put the Iron Bands of Binding on Let him. Let me do a intimidation roll against him, because we're going to keep going back and forth to just, like, take us to this place. Like, basically, to go along with this plan. Do the roll. All right, uh, 15. So go ahead and try to um, do it. Okay, I walk up to him. I put my hand on his shoulder since I'm assuming. Well, is he is he like he's, kneeling he's down kneeling. on the ground? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> yep, he's my height. He's on his knees. So, <laughs> yes. I walk over. I put my hand on his shoulder. And I'm like, listen, Nate. We can either kill you right now, burn you to a crisp, and then serve you to our friend Zozo here, or you can trust that we will. That we will let you live after you take us to this uh, human encampment and we're able to acquire these riches. We will let you live if you hold up your end of the bargain. Counter offer. <laughs> you don't imprison me, but you do let me live. You know where my camp is. You know where the tent is. You meet me back there tomorrow morning and we will make for the town where we can uh, plan our next move on how to rob them. How about that? It'll give me time to bandage the gaping wound in my neck. Counter, counter offer. We bandage the wound in your neck. We bring you yes. back to our camp for the time being. But we leave the bindings on your arms so that you do not try to pull any funny business in the morning after we rest then we go to your encampment and after we acquire the treasure you go free well exactly how much pull do you have in this place how can you guarantee that they will let me back out once you bring me in well, hold on are we are we talking about just camping out here or are we talking about taking him back to the main base i was talking about taking him back to lilith's place oh. because the main place will want to keep him right so we can't take him back to the main place is her place outside of the main place enough? Yeah, I think so. We just ha we just have to hide him from our neighbor. Okay. We still need to take Zozo um, back to the dungeon, so right. So he can do his orientation. Also, is there is there any way? <laughs> is there anything left of that uh, that troglodyte? Because I was thinking, like maybe we can make like a, a crude disguise for him or something, like a monster disguise, and uh, <laughs> help to help sneak him in. So you can blend. Yeah. There's some bones. There's a little bit of guts, some sinew, some blood. That's mostly about it. Uh, maybe a few scraps of skin hit here and there. We can make a pretty gross mask out of all this you stuff. You want to try to do that? You want to try to disguise him? When yeah. We, yeah. When we bandage him up, we can even like wrap his whole head up. Oh, that's good. Yeah. In bloody Ooh, bandages. Yeah. That's, that's frightening. They won't know. There you go. All right. So after we bandage you up, we will also disguise you and promise your safety while we take you back to our place of residence. And do you promise that I will come to no harm? Define harm. Waslo <laughs> promises. The, the one I'm worried about is the snake fellow here. Fellow. I promise nothing. <laughs> Jesus. See, that's the part that gives me pause. That is, that's <laughs> the worrisome part. You will have to defend your life to me. Yeah, that's what I've been trying to do this whole you time. You must prove to us this treasure must be worth it or else. Very well. I will go along with your plan for now, but if I sense betrayal, you're the first head that I remove. Good Understood? Luck. Deal. He's not going to be removing. You're not really in a place to bargain right now, but 
We will take the threat and accept it. Great. Heal me first. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have healing powers. I don't Who know where you- Who has healing powers? <laughs> when? I don't think any of you guys do, to Zo, be honest. Zo. Didn't, didn't we get a po- Oh, we got a potion of climbing. Do I need to do like a full rest in order to, to heal? Well, we can kind of be short resting as we're- You can take a short rest. Running. Yeah, you, you can take a short rest real quick, and then you can do a um, you can do a roll to try to gain some health back. So four plus two, six back. I, I want you guys to describe how you're disguising Nate the Great right now. Like what all you're doing, like with all the pieces of the trog and and that well, kind of shit. Okay, so when blood dries, it's kind of sticky. Or I guess when the sinew and stuff dries, it gets a little sticky. So I'm thinking. We do, yeah. we do like Lilith said, and wrap him in bandages first. First, wrap up his wounds, make sure he doesn't die on us. Then wrap his face uh, almost mummy-like, but then like get some of the leftover like bones and sinew and stuff, and kind of like sloppily put it on to the bandages in as convincing a manner as possible, to where he's just some kind of creature of unknown origin. Okay. We also have a glass eye and a dead fish. So I don't know if that would be helpful, as well as a small patch of pouch of animal bones. So I don't know if we like throw that in with the Oh, yeah, you wrappings. guys, you, you found those on the trog. Stick I think. a glass yeah. eye on the top. Yeah. And he smells of dead fish because we just rub it all over him. Oh, yeah, he stinks. Nice. So you, you're disguising him. You've got him all all wrapped up and goody. Did you put the, the iron bands of binding on him? Yeah. And so I say we do that, too. Okay. I, I think because of how smelly he is of whatever, like he throws up in through his bandages. Oh, even better. So it's like even piercing oh, through. <laughs> and it's yeah. like he's got vomit on his like armor. Um, so now the five of you are walking back through Oakwater Forest, heading towards Tehegre. When you hear the rustling of some some feathers and some like cawing, when a hooded kinku steps out from the shadows, his beady black eyes are fixed on you as he pulls open his robes to reveal that he has pockets lined with various trinkets, uh, potions, and, and other things for sale marked with individual little price tags. And you know that this particular kinku is the infamous traveling merchant known as Sleazel. As a reminder, this is where you guys get to use your peril points to purchase items from Sleazel. And for our listeners, peril points are earned per every rating that we receive on Apple Podcasts. Just by giving us a rating, the group here earns peril points, which show up as little stone coins marked with a skull in their pockets. Right now, you guys have 14. For those listeners who don't know what a kinku is. A crow person. <laughs> Just, so picture like a, a anthropomorphic crow with like a little hood and cape and stuff. Birdman. <laughs> a birdman. So here are some of the items that Sleazel has right now. He does have some uh, potions of healing. He has something called Perfume d'Amour de Chat, which is a small vial of bright pink perfume that attracts cats in a quarter mile radius with three charges that last an hour. He has something called Gore's Lucky Coin that is a copper coin that always lands on heads, no matter what. An alchemy jug. Now, this is like an ornate gallon jug that sounds as if it's always filled with liquid. And as an action... The owner of the jug can name any liquid they want, and as a second action, they can uncork the jug and pour whatever liquid that they named out of that jug. Now, the amount that comes out is dependent on what the liquid is. There is like a, a table chart that we can look at, and that'll tell you how much comes out. So if it's like water, blood, honey, whatever. Mm, um, blood and honey. There's also a bag of holding. This is basically a magical satchel that can hold up to 500 pounds of items in a volume of up to 64 cubic feet by transporting materials to a little pocket dimension of the astral plane. If the bag is ever damaged or destroyed, any items inside of it are lost to the astral plane forever. Here's the, the, the two that I'm excited about that I want to talk about. These next two items, and these are the last two I'm going to mention, were items that were crafted by our Patreon supporters. So nice. Um, this first one is called Balloon. 
This is a magic item crafted by our Patreon supporter, Emily. This is a sinister looking balloon full of magical helium that when inhaled could result in one of two effects that last up to 10 minutes. That is either in game or in combat. And in combat, that means like a hundred rounds. So it would last a long time in combat on a D 20 roll an 11 to 20 would grant you a deep and evil sounding voice that grants you plus two to intimidation. A one to 10 would result in the opposite effect, giving you a high pitched squeaky voice with a negative two to intimidation. That's awesome. Is it spelled just like balloon, like regular or B A L L. Okay. O O O O O O N. Oh, I see. I see. So there's a lot of O's. That's why okay. there's a lot of O's. Got it. And I was, I was, she asked if I could say it kind of spooky. And then the final is the um, the Renardin amulet. This was a magic item crafted by our Patreon supporter, Nickel Force. This amulet requires one action to activate. And once it's activated, the wearer transforms into a ghostly fox apparition, granting them plus five to their attack range. And this replaces their normal attacks with a multi-attack of both bite and scratch. And these attacks scale with the level of the player, so it's not going to be like necessarily a low kind of damage attack. Like, um, you know, it it wouldn't be like a D four and stay like that forever. It would scale with your level, and you also get the option of sacrificing five AC for plus five more to hit. So it would basically increase uh, your range of attack, and you could also have the option of um, being more of a target, but being able to almost guarantee that you're going to do more damage. So if you are interested in any of those, you have 14 points. So you tell me what kind of things you're interested in. I will tell you how much they cost. Um, How much is balloon? That would be three peril points. And now remember, you guys got to agree on these things too, because Sleazel doesn't like drama. So if yeah. you guys like fight over stuff, he's just gonna flutter away. Oh, okay. How much is potions of healing? One each, and he has three of them. How much is the bag of holding? The bag of holding is five peril points. And the rem- remard? Renardin amulet? Rem- oh, Renardin. Uh, that's three. Yeah, three peril points. What do you guys think, purchase wise? I would like at least one potion <laughs> for I myself. Think we <laughs> but I mean there's three we could get we could each get one in case we need it I should I would say we get three because none of us have healing powers right yeah okay so three potions agreed that's three okay so that's three out of our 14 yes I like those um, Patreon items those are pretty cool so I'd be down for either or both of those yeah that'll be six that would be six if we get them both unless anyone disagrees oh yeah definitely get both you want both of them? Yeah. Yeah, so that leaves us with five points. Okay, so what if we get the bag of holding and then we just... Put it all in there? <laughs> yeah, like how, how heavy is the bag of holding? Well, it can hold up to 500 pounds. Yeah, but how heavy, like, can I just carry it like a backpack or something? You can oh, you easily. can carry yes. 10 pounds. <laughs> no, with my mage hand, I can. Yeah. I'm just talking about like on my back. Almost like a computer bag, like a leather computer bag. It'd be like that. Well, messenger bag. Okay. So yeah. It's like a, yeah, it's like a messenger bag. Yeah. Then I, I don't mind holding that myself because I'm usually the one who's outside of battle range anyway, since I have to keep my distance. So mm-hmm. it might be safest on me. That and that's five. So that would cover all of our fourteen pair of points. The bag of holding okay. is five? Yeah. So you're gonna buy the okay, so you're gonna buy three of the potions. You're going to buy the balloon, the Renardin amulet, and the bag of holding. Yes. Rock on. Okay, so you're going to spend all the the peril points and get all those things. And we don't, as characters, know where the peril points come from, do we? You have no idea where peril points come from. They just show up in your pockets. No, Nobody knows. So you guys, the only thing you guys know is that it is somehow connected to the Consortium of, of Villainy... You don't know anything other than that. They just show up in your pockets. That's uh, uh, in game. That's all you guys know. So Sleazel hands you all the items that you've asked for. As you guys gather all your little 
peril coins. And he just opens his gullet really wide. He opens his mouth. I don't know where these came from, but uh, here, have some. Uh, Sleazel. Uh, 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 <laughs> Was that he, enough? He just he he gobbles up all of the <laughs> all of the little coins, and he flies away. Thanks. Well, that was interesting. That was magical. <laughs> All right, so you guys you guys have a bunch of cool stuff now. We yeah. Um, so you guys heading back towards the dungeon then? Yeah, that way so we can like show Zozo where he will be stationed at. While also transporting Nate the Great, who we have uh, monster-sized. So um, you're heading back towards the the uh, the dungeon. As you are heading, you you see you know the big statue that marks the entrance to the dungeon. And like beneath his bandages, you hear Nate the Great go, My statue! And that statue is right there! That's supposed to say Nate the Great. What the hell? <laughs> Shh. Well, Quiet. Welcome home, Nate. You need to blend in. Yes. What's our What's our uh, cover story, by the way, for this guy? Is he Is yeah, he just are. a new accomp... We, we are, he's not the monster we're giving up, but he's just our new accomp... Our new slave? Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe he's our... Uh, What's our motivation? Our new roommate for now, since he's coming home with us. Sure, yeah. But But that way, so they don't think. I mean, how many roommates do you guys have that you put in chains? Uh, It's true. We wouldn't put a a roommate in chains. He's an intern. He is our intern. He likes the chains, Ah. though. It's what gets him off. It's part of his gig. Why does everything got to be so sexual with the snake one? (laughs) We've stopped asking that a long You're time ago. Such a deviant. You open the uh, grate, the um, the hidden door, entering into the dungeon, and once again, all five of you are then met by the hobgoblin known as Chol. Ah, we returns, but we has more we. What this? We return with the monster you requested. Meet Zozo. He's here for the job. Greetings, we Zozo. Howdy. What this one? And he points to Nate, the one in the chains. Smell very good, this one. Why chains? He's an intern. He likes it. It's weird. Just ignore him. Intern of what kind? He of, uh, serves the kind? us. He is trying to become a dignified monster like the rest of us. Serve dinner? Serve in what capacity? Everything. Everything. Excel spreadsheets? What about everything? Don't you understand? What droll, droll, toll, whatever your name is. Fly, why you speak to troll this way? Because you're not getting the picture. Hmm. Fine. He looks towards uh, Lilith and he says, Take creature to cells. The rest take spoils to financial. Now go. I will see you after. All right. Sounds good. So, so Troll steps aside and lets everybody in. So if Lilith is taking Zozo over towards the cells... Who is uh, Nate going with? I think he goes with Lilith. Lilith. See, okay. I don't know that he well, even trusts me. I feel like he would go with Wesley since they yeah, they yeah. have their oh yeah that's a contract. A I, I wouldn't even trust Lilith to take <laughs> him with her at this point. <laughs> I have my eyes on the prize, and I know he needs to stay alive to get that. So I'm gonna split you guys up just a little bit. So Lynn and Waslo and Nate are heading to financial. Um, where you guys are supposed to turn in, like, you know, the spoils of, you know, whatever treasures and stuff that you've found out on your quest. Even the the dagger that Zozo presented us. Hey, uh, Oslo, let's, uh, let's have a little talk here. Um, what, are, what are we actually gonna, what are we actually gonna give financial here? As our first mission, Waslo thinks it would be in our best interest to give them at least 90% of what we acquired Saving 10% for ourselves. That sounds fair. Uh, like, we're keeping the shiny dagger, though, right? Oh, absolutely. Okay, that's good. We're good. We're good. Shall we go to financial? 
let's take out all the things that we're going to provide them and then let me put the dagger in the bag of holding just so it's hidden. Spoken we, like a true thief. Well, just so we can have everything <laughs> we're going to present out and ready to go so there's no question. So okay. that's the 30 copper, the 8 silver, the 2 gold, the 10 shines of gemstones, the wand of binding. Uh, we use the animal bones and the glass eye. Glass eye, I'm assuming you're keeping the fleece. Yes, it's very comfortable to sit on. And <laughs> Wazla needs it for spells. It's and, ridiculous. And then we also had a potion of climbing, which I'm assuming also is going. The uh, the potions, out. I think uh, Boffle told you potions you guys can keep. Because oh. those can aid you, but... But let's put the potions in there anyway. So it's a sign, a gesture of good faith that we are offering everything that we found. And since we're new, we don't yet know exactly. We'll pretend we don't mm. yet know exactly what they're going to take and what they won't. Ah, uh, yes, yes. We are Clever. offering everything. You go down the hallway where you know R&D is on one side and financial is on the other side of this hallway. And entering the room that's supposed to be where financial is, you find a Durgar sitting at a makeshift desk with stacks of scrolls piled high in separate bins. Behind him is a large contraption that appears to be some kind of iron plate attached to a pulley system with cables that move upward through a crevice uh, into the top of his office. He's sipping from a mug that reads, I'd rather be pillaging when he sees you <laughs> enter. He says, I, what you got for me? Well, We've got all of this, and Len presents all of this. She, there's nothing, like, visible, shiny that's in the room, just that big pulley system, correct? Yeah, you, I mean, you can kind of see every once in a while there's, like, a few, like, maybe coins or gems that have, like, fallen on the floor, like, off of the thing, but not, like, a whole lot, and it's usually, like, stuff that doesn't look like it's worth much. Okay. But so, for the most part, it's just, like, the, the big contraption in the background. So Len is not entranced by anything that would distract her from this particular <laughs> adventure. All right. Place your treasures on the plate back here. We put them all on the plate. Now, that everything? I've got ways of finding out. We swear on our intern's life. Yeah. He uh, <laughs> looks up and he sees uh, Nate in all of his gross <laughs> glory <laughs> and stuff like that. Right. Fair enough. You new to this dungeon? I don't think I've seen you before. First, Quibble. Well, good. Glad you were honest with me. I don't much like secrets. Hurts my feelings when folks ain't honest with me. All right, you can go. And he starts uh, pulling on one of the cables and the plate starts kind of moving upwards into the roof of the cave beyond your sight. Seth Rex kind of wanders by as you're finishing up and he peeks his head in. Ah, welcome back. Tell me, how'd my uh, invention go? Did it work? What did? Oh. Oh, God, what is this? He's looking at Nate, in, um, who is now bound in his invention, the Iron Bands of Binding. This is what you caught with it? What even is this? We captured Hi, ourselves Seth. a new intern. An intern? What is he going to be doing? He boosts our confidence in battles. Show Etan, e show him, cheer for us. Do, do one of your dances, the dances that you do so well. Um, hey, good job, everyone. He starts flossing. Um, that's the only <laughs> dance you know. He's, he starts flossing. Oh, isn't it um, hideous? I love it. <laughs> Man, that's just, yeah, see? He's that's got awful. the worst. Yeah, yeah, it is. He's a confidence booster, you say. Any chance that I could borrow him from time to time? I'd like, how much confidence does he boost? Like, uh, Seth, he's our friend. What? You can't have him. You know, I just wanted to point out real quick that Lilith never did hit me up on Monster Book. Um, in fact, I ended up sending her a message and she left me on red. And that's some shit. <laughs> We've been a little busy there, Seth. I don't know, capturing things using your special tools or whatever. Yeah, I mean, it's not like I gave it to you for free or anything. I mean, well, to be fair, what? Lilith was almost killed. So cut her a little bit of slack. Oh, Oh, yeah. that sucks. Yeah, that's not fun. Well, I hope she's feeling better. I'm glad you guys are safe. Um, I'm glad my my contraption seemed to have worked. I'll, I'll make some more of those um, in case you ever need any more. But uh, yeah, just 
you know, tell Lilith to, you know, accept my friend request, you know, as per our deal. That would be pretty great. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell her to do that as soon as she stops bleeding all over the floor. I'm sure she'll be in a rush to do it for you. Awesome. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate that quite fantastic. a bit. All right, we're going to cut over to uh, to Lilith and Zozo. So they are arriving at the uh, prison cells where you can see this part of the cave is, is kind of circular with six large cages of varying metals secured together with uh, leather hides arranged around a large pit. In the center of that pit is a large wooden stake protruding from the ground with empty manacles attached. The smell is of old blood and viscera and it rises from a grate toward the bottom of that pit and Lilith you hear Baffle's voice come from behind as he approaches you ah I see you've returned with a monster for the pit I must say I'm quite impressed you pulled off the uh, difficult quivel for your first time what kind of creature is this I've never seen something like this before neither have I but his name is Zozo Zozo, this is our horny toad, Baffle. Baffle, but yes, thank you. And you don't have to call me horny toad. I do well for myself, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, Bullywug is just fine. Pleasure to meet you there, um, Baffle. Well, uh, yes, pleasure to meet you. I, it talks. Well, that's very fine. If you would like to head back down, this is where you would be working. Um, I'll come back and meet you here, Zozo, if you'd like to stay and kind of get to know the place a little bit, and then we'll go through your orientation. Um, I do need to speak with Lilith um, and the others once they are finished, um, I'm assuming, turning in their uh, treasures to financial. Um, let's go head over to the break room, and we'll have a quick debrief before I escort you to your reward. Will do. Zozo, thank you for helping the Hellmates. Oh, it's been my pleasure. It's been such a wild ride. I'm so grateful that y'all have chosen me to accompany you out here, and I'm looking forward to uh, to getting a fresh start. Baffle leads you to the uh, the break room, Lilith, and kind of, you know, has a, a seat there. Craggle brings you a couple drinks with a, a few extra for um, Lynn and Waslo when they get there, which we're just going to say for time's sake that you guys eventually, you know, walk in there and you're all seated at this table. Baffle kind of scoots into his, his chair a little bit. Opens up a small leather pouch where you see him pull out a handful of dried up flies and drops a few into his drink and then starts um, taking a little sip. Well, now that you've had your first quibble, how did you feel that things went? Tell me about it. How did, how did things go for you as a team? I wasn't expecting as many encounters as we had in the tomb, but the ruin definitely opened up to plenty of opportunities, which is why Zozo was a helpful monster and I believe a great replacement or addition to our office here. Waslo had a pleasant time. Uh, there were many treasures to be found, uh, all of which we have provided the treasury and we were fairly and justly rewarded because of it. And how about you, Lynn? How did you enjoy your first quibble? It was fine. Now where's our reward? <laughs> well, we'll get there. We'll get there. Now, what do you feel is uh, working versus where might your team need some additional support? Seth offered us an iron band of binding. It was quite useful. That should be a necessity. Oh, okay, okay. That's very good. Very good. Waslo feels that we should possibly acquire healing potions of some sort. Yes, we have had quite a few um, requests for healing potions to be distributed pre quivel I will talk with our um, esteemed leader, Boss Monster Torth the Mad, about that um, for the umpteenth time. And see if we can finally convince him that that would be uh, something that would be beneficial to our teams. We could consider it health insurance. Lynn, how about yourself? Uh, what's working and, and where could you use more support? Do I really have to answer these questions? 
You don't have to if you really don't feel like it, I suppose. I don't see the purpose. Okay, um, I'll move on then. Um, is there anything that I can do to help you all in your development as villains? I, us our reward. I think we need full days of rest after a, a quest. Some of us need to heal properly. I do see you're bleeding quite a bit right there. That's <laughs> some nasty business. Yeah, that's why we'd like to speed this along here, Baffle. I mean, that'd be nice. Well, geez. I mean, I I, I, I understand your... Uh, I understand that you are excited to, to receive your... Um, your rewards, and yes, I do understand the need for rest. It, you may rest at your discretion. You do not have to report necessarily every single day. So if you do need a vacation, you may take vacation as you please. Um, just know that you do work on a per project basis. So if you do not report to work, you do not get paid. That is how it works. So just bear that in mind. But if there is nothing else, we can discuss the matter of your rewards, if you are ready. 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 With that said, Boffle gingerly sets down um, the tin shines on the table and slides it towards the three of you. Financial typically would handle reward transactions of monetary value, but I asked to handle this one first so we could get our debriefing out of the way. That is very typical for first time um Weevils um, for uh, new companies in the dungeon is to have the debrief, make sure that things were uh, meeting expectations, that you're all feeling um, good and safe as a team, and uh, and feeling like this is a good fit. So now that that's done, we can go discover your mystery prize and uh, meet our uh, brilliant leader, Torith the Mad who will uh, be presenting the mystery prize to you. I do not know what this prize is myself, but I am just to escort you to him, and you will find out what it is there. So, Baffle escorts you from the break room up a narrow hall and stairway, very carefully, as there are no walls to keep you from falling into the abyss here. And finally, you reach a ledge with a plank bridge. The bridge is not long, um, and beyond it, you can see a ledge on the opposite side. And there's a large, ornate set of doors carved out of what looks like the bones of a giant creature. This is where I'd leave you. Our uh, esteemed boss monster is on the other side of that door with what I assume is your mystery prize. However, getting there could prove a little interesting. Is Nate with us too? Nate's hanging out with Craggle at the bar. <laughs> we'll say that. Okay. 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 There are traps and puzzles and other sorts of things on the other side of this bridge. You're going to need to make it past them to get to the doors. And there your mystery prize awaits you. And I do wish you luck. Moving through the bridge, you come to the ledge on the other side and see that the only area to move across to get to the door is a series of 16 carved stone plates on the ground in a four by four grid. Each plate is about two by two feet, meaning you wouldn't all be able to travel across necessarily together. There are various carvings on each of these stone tiles from, from what you can see. Oh God. This looks like a puzzle, and Waslo is not good at puzzles. Why can't they just give us the mystery prize? I mean, we did the Queevil. We gave them our other loot. Um, the first row of four tiles, there is a bunch of different size circles. Then there is a sheep. And then there is a bunch of, um, like, a jagged pattern. And then there is a crisscross pattern. Let me just step on one of them. I just have to know, but not with both feet. Let me just put pressure on the one that looks like a, is it a sheep? That one looks the least painful. <laughs> Giant sheep just falls on you. <laughs> <laughs> what if oh, it was the most painful. <laughs> cool. You turn into a sheep. Oh, I knew it. Well, Wazzo didn't know it, but I as a person knew it. <laughs> well. Can I still talk? We'll say that you can still talk. <laughs> yes. 
Oh, all right. <laughs> it seems fine. Laszlo doesn't think anything happened. Uh, let us progress. Hey, Laszlo, how many feet do yeah, you have? Yes. Uh, two, just like, oh, 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 no. <laughs> well, all right. On second thought, it appears that Laszlo is now a sheep. So proceed with caution. Uh, I'm going to. All right. Let me try this out. I'm just going to. Len just flies over and tries to just go to the doors by flying. Okay, cool. Do a dexterity saving throw. 24. 24. Okay. You are able to pass the first set of tiles. Do another dexterity saving throw. 22. Pass the second set of tiles. Do another dexterity saving throw. Hey, guys, this isn't so bad. Get it, girl. Get it. 19. Several crossbow bolts come shooting out of the sides of the area where you guys are. And you are struck for eight damage. <gasps> what the what? Oh, no. Lynn is very bloodied. Ow. Is she still Guys. able to fly? Can I fly back? I-, I will let you fly back unhindered. All right. So Lynn flies back a little dejected and covered in, like, blood. Can someone take this arrow out of me? Weslow is now stress shedding. You see wool falling off of him. <laughs> okay, so there's little fluffs of cotton just kind of floating around in the air now. Like when you're outside, like in the summer, and those little cotton tree things shed. Yeah. There's just little tufts floating around in the air. <laughs> I don't know that this mystery is worth it. Now that Weslow is a sheep, he feels the need to move forward. So that second row is a flame. The crisscross pattern, the mushroom, the sheep. I, I go to the mushroom. <laughs> so, Waslow, you are now on the mushroom tile. And then that tile moves down a little bit. And a little lizard crawls out from somewhere between the tiles and gives you just a little nip on your leg. You have turned back into a goblin, but now you're poisoned. And you have disadvantage on all of your rolls. Uh, somehow this is worse. <laughs> Waslow misses being a sheep. At least you're not bleeding. I move over to the right to try to be a sheep again. So the tile to the right has another sheep engraved on it, and nothing happens. Oh. Maybe that means that that was the right tile to be on that row. Uh, okay. You have two options. Fire bad. Uh, <laughs> ice also bad? Unsure. Maybe you need to go back to the mushroom. Waslo, do you have any equipment you can throw on a tile? Waslo doesn't want to risk being shot by an arrow, so Waslo will not cheat the system. I step back <laughs> over to the mushroom to see if I can get either unpoisoned or more poisoned. I don't know. A lizard comes out again and bites your other leg. <laughs> oh. And this time deals four damage. Oh, shoot. Okay, let me step up to the cloud. Okay, so that third row is the mushroom, a cloud, the fire, and the snowflake. Uh, maybe you should try yeah, the other cloud. mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> to the cloud. Okay, so you step onto the tile to the the uh, upper left of, of where you are, and that tile goes down a little bit, and a yellow stinking cloud emits up from the floor. So I need you to actually, it, it emits up and fills the entire area. So I need everyone, except for Lilith, because you're immune, Yes. to make a constitution saving throw. 19? Nine. So, Weslow, you actually passed. You were breathing kind of heavy at first, but for whatever reason, I guess because you were standing right over the center point while the the cloud was emanating up from the cracks around it, that it didn't kind of go over the center point right where you are, but it made it up through the sides and went over towards Lynn and Lilith, and Lilith is immune to this type of poison. But Lynn is not. And Lynn, you are coughing and gasping. From now on, before you make any any type of move or anything, you're going to have to make a constitution roll first to see if you can get out of this and not cough or retch before you try to make any kind of movement. <coughs> Oslo, no more, no more clouds, please. <coughs> Waslo has three options. Please... Every single choice Waslow has made thus far has been the wrong one. Someone else decided. <laughs> yeah, so so the three tiles before you right now, so, to the left, um, looks like some kind of jaggedy kind of etching. Then there's like a snowflake looking, looking etching. And then to the next to that is kind of like a, almost like a burst, like a starburst sort of etching. It all looks pretty bad. 
I'm just in the back kind of inhaling the and wafting in the poison in the air. <laughs> like, like, I'll try and save you. I'll breathe it all in. You're like, oh, yeah. <sighs> Ooh. I, I assume Waslo had some like some of that wool plugging his nose from when he was a sheep earlier shedding. So that's how he avoided the poison. <laughs> Are your fleas? Uh, if I'm thinking about it. So first sheep turned me into a sheep. Second sheep did nothing. And this is just a conversation amongst us. Does that mean that I deactivated the sheep thing because I already activated it? No. Or does that mean that the second sheep was a safe tile? I, I had not. thought that the sheep was a safe tile because when you went back to the mushroom, it activated again. Mm-hmm. True, true, true. So that's why I assume like nothing happened. That's a good sign. So your two options was the fire or the snow, right. okay. but you didn't do that. So Okay, if it's every other tile is the safe tile or maybe there's just one safe tile per row. Oh, that's what I was thinking. There was only one per row. That, that yeah, safe. I was thinking that there was only one safe tile per row. Yeah, we were foolish for not testing that theory, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but we can at least try and do what you were saying. Like, what if it is every other? So if the first snowflake was a trap, but the second snowflake isn't, kind of what the right the or sheep if, was. if the first oh, fire point. was or yeah or if the first like ice shards or whatever those were then I, that one would be safe up there so it's less likely to be every other one is a trap but i'm not certain yeah i i would pick either the snowflake or the starburst one of those two if every second one is not safe then he could do either the snowflake or the rain I feel more confident in the snowflake just because I'm unsure about what this blizzard of spikes is yeah all right um, well the snowflake isn't so great either we could all freeze well to yeah but it <laughs> okay. could also be a pleasant snowflake and we might be able to build snowmen out of it so I'll take that one <laughs> Waslo you move straight forward from the tile with the cloud to the tile with the snowflake and nothing happens yay, yay. but does the door open it does not, but you can see that there is an inscription on the door. What is it? Can I read what it says? Well, Wait, Waslo you can't could, read. but Waslo can't read. Oh, yeah. <sighs> There's some sort of scripture on this this door, but <laughs> it, must sure. be, it must be an ancient language that Waslo does not recognize. Waslo, you don't recognize anything. Can you describe it? Uh, little shapes and lines. Um, no, this is terrible. Someone else come up and read this. Oh, no. Oh, God. This makes me so happy right now. Like, I, I just need you guys to understand. It makes me so happy right now that the one character <laughs> that finally got all the way up through the puzzle is the only one that has no chance of reading this thing. <laughs> Oh my god. I love it. Uh, so I was the worst choice for this. You were the <laughs> worst choice. The the worst choice you guys could have made. Uh, I, would ar- I would argue that we didn't make a choice. But also just went ahead and was like, boom. Let's so good. This. But it's, it, I mean, it plays with that character perfectly. Yeah, no, it does. If, if he had already uh, used his inspiration point, he would be getting another one right now. I'm going to try and get there. <laughs> Don't step on the sheep. Which one are you going to take, Lilith? I am going to take the meteor shower. Wait, before the she, jagged one. Before she yes. moves, am I able to use my healing potion? Wait, I don't know if I want to use that yet. Never oh, mind. Oh, and he and fucking Weslo has the other. He's he's holding on to the fucking parcel of stuff, so I could have been healed first. Oh. You move on to the the tile with like the the jagged kind of design on it, and nothing happens. Yay! Ooh, good choice. All right. Len uh, hops onto the uh, stone with Lilith. I'm awesome. gonna follow you. Len is small enough that Len can accompany Lilith. Just Waslo and Lilith would be too much. Okay. Okay. So where do you two want to go next? We should sheep? go on the sheep. So you move to the sheep, and nothing happens. Okay. Fire. So yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yes. Okay, you have moved to the fire and nothing happens. Awesome. Snowflake. Okay, okay but, ne- but you we are, can't... Can we get on the snowflake? You can't, but you are close enough that you can read the inscription. Oh, okay. okay. Do I need to roll <laughs> okay. anything? Or do I just read nope. it? Sweet. You're able to read it. 
Someone uh, please decipher this this ancient language. <laughs> it is literally just written in common tongue. Like it's not even like any kind of it's like the most legible writing you've ever seen. It's beautifully written and ornate. Not hard at all to read. <laughs> <laughs> it's on print. It says I have a head but cannot think. I have a tail that cannot wag. I have no body at all, and I shine like the sun in the light. It's a coin. The doors start creaking open and reveal an ornate chamber decorated in bones and skulls and leather and tapestries and all kinds of good stuff. And every once in a while, you notice a golden cup or old treasure chest laying around just haphazardly surrounded by a few scattered shinies just laying around just all over the place. In the middle of the room, sitting upon the throne carved out of the skull of a great dragon sits a furry hyena-like creature dressed in what once was probably elegant clothes from some elven aristocrat or something, but are now draped around him, stained, stinking, and shredded. He even wears a small golden crown, though the jewels that would have adorned it are all missing. And below it, a cracked monocle sits over an obviously blinded eye. And Toreth the Mad springs forward from his seat, and in the blink of an eye is pacing around the three of you in a circle as you walk through the doors. And he sniffs. <laughs> Who are you? Did I send for you? How did you get past my traps? They're ingenious. I made these traps. Actually, someone made them for me, but I asked for them myself. How did you get in here? Hello. Hi. I'm Torth the Mad. Yeah, we can see that. See what? What do you see? Ba- Baffle you has smell. sent us. Baffle has sent Baffle? us here. I know no Baffle. Who is Baffle? Baffle? Baffle. I know Baffle. He heads up <laughs> villain resources. What do you know of Baffle? Who is this Baffle? Is he here to kill me? How did you get here? We were promised a mystery prize for finishing our first quevel. Ah, yes. Mystery. Oh, yes, 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 yes. So many mysteries. (laughs) Are you one of them? Are you here to kill me? Ha! But I'm too fast for you. Watch. And he, like, runs around the room. He just kind of runs behind his throne. He's pretty fast, but he's not, like, the fastest thing you've ever seen. He just kind of... Runs behind the throne and peeks out from behind it. And he's like, see, I'm too fast for you. You cannot catch me. No one is interested in killing you. We are only here for our mystery prize. Yeah. Baffle sent us. Oh, did you bring me my new pet? A new monster for the dungeon? Yes, 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 yes. Where is it? Where's my pretty monster? Should we feed it? Does it eat souls? Does it want my soul? No. He's in orientation right now. Oh, he's being oriented. Of course, of course. Uh, Oh, this was all just a test. And now for your mystery prize, you will be part of my secret. Shh, tell no one. Part of my secret special guard. In addition to the Quevels, you will carry out a super secret... A super secret task for me. That is your mystery prize. Do we have to accept? You can also have that golden cup over there. The the one on the floor. Just take it. Take it. Can we take the golden cup? I don't like how it looks at me. Do we gain any additional reward for completing your mystery task? Yes, 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 yes. You'll get even more pay and even more tasks. Very, very cool tasks. (laughs) Not as in cold, as in prestigious. This is your first surprise special services quevel quest. That's a lot of words. So many words. <laughs> and there will be extra rewards. So much more rewards. But somebody in our dungeon is trying to kill me. And you will find out who. And you will kill them dead first. Kill them before you kill me. Th- before they kill me. You will not kill me. Kill them. Kill them dead. Kill them dead first. How did this guy get to be the leader? It was a lottery. I won. (laughs) 
Ha! That explains a lot. Yes, yes, yes. But first, you must find my assassin before they do the assassining. Are we agreed? Do we have to do the puzzle again? What puzzle are we talking about? To come into your dungeon. Oh, yes, that puzzle. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, no, 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 no. You may, you may go. Find my assassin before he assassins. Uh, I... Are there any leads that you can provide us to help us find your assassin? Yes. Everyone is a suspect. Oh, great. <laughs> yes. The best kind of clue. Yes. <laughs> really helped us narrow it down. Has has anyone been acting suspiciously? Everyone. Yes, even me. Isn't <laughs> it me? It's not me. Tell me it's not me. Tell me. He starts shaking Waslow, like by the shoulders. Tell me it's not me. It's, it's, not, it's you. not you. It's not you. Okay, good. Okay, everyone but me is suspicious. I, I will need to circle my hellmates for a moment, sir. Yes, do circles. Do all the circles. I will be over here. And he's just sniffing a wall. <laughs> Children, I, I believe he's uh, a bit mad. His name is very accurate, yes. Well, he said that if we're on his super secret guard, that we're that forever. And I'm not really ready to make that kind of commitment in my life. <laughs> Waslow feels that we are stuck here forever regardless. So this may just help us uh, move up in the ranks during our stay. We do still have our other quest to find the treasure that Nate apparently has promised. Sure, sure. Uh, we, we have time for both. We're here forever, remember? This is a fair point. I mean, I guess we can find ourselves a killer. Assassin would be suspicious person. Main quest and then our side quest will be to uh, loot that town, the human town, and find treasure for ourselves that we do not have to turn in. Maybe we can outsource Zozo to listen to all of our workers here in the dungeon since we are now his friend. He does have that secret eye that determines if people are telling the truth or not. We can we can interrogate everyone. I, I do have to say that uh, our, our main mission is going to be the town with the treasure. Just just a suggestion. And then our side <laughs> mission will be to get the assassin. Agree, agree. Yeah. Well, it, sure, yes. It feels a little side mission-y to me, but uh, <laughs> that's okay. We can... <laughs> <laughs> whatever whatever works for and, everyone. I don't care about Taurus would be killer. So we agree. We will tell him yes, but we will not start till next week. Well, I think he, he actually made his way into our circle while we were all speaking, so he is hearing all of this. Oh, hello. <laughs> Hi, Taurus. Hello. Uh, the, the wall smells suspicious. What? Have you questioned this wall? Yeah, we did. It's not it. Damn, I was sure the wall is innocent. We accept your offer and we will take on this task to find your assassin and get him before he gets you. Yes, take on, take on assassins. Take them, take them out, all of them. Yes, thank you. You will be rewarded very much. Not very another much. mystery reward this time, right? <laughs> Mysteries, yes, there will be so many more mystery. Just what I've always wanted to work for a madman. <laughs> man? Just... <laughs> Sorry. Was Is that there a man here? Sorry, that was an insult. Have you brought man to my dungeon? No, 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 no man. Absolutely no, not. man. Only villains. Only villains. Yeah, just mad villain is what I meant to say. Good. I feel I can trust you for some reason. No one, especially you three, would ever dare bring a man into my dungeon for any reason that I can surmise. So never. it is thus. No, no, of course. Yes. Clearly, clearly not. Never, no, never. That's, I don't like men. Now go. Find we, we assassins. Will, we will leave you. We yes, will leave. leave. Leave and find. Leave and find assassins. Kill them. Kill them all. Bring me their souls in a bag with nice gift wrapping, please. Can we still take the goblet? Yeah, you can take that goblet, for sure. Yeah. He said he could have it. Take the cup, the golden cup. We're going to just take this with us, uh, thanks. 
Yes, take it. Put the souls in there. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we leave and we step along this path that we know is safe, or at least Waslo steps along <laughs> the path that he knows is safe now after going through intense pain getting there. Bafel is on the bridge now, like kind of waiting for you. And you can see Nate the Great, still in his, you know, monster costume, is standing on the bridge with Bafel. And Bafel says, Um, I think that maybe we need to have a little bit of a conversation. As you're approaching with this new information, you hear a voice that you've never heard before come from the bag of holding that Waslo has at his side. And you hear the voice say, Guilty. Thanks for listening to this episode of Party in Peril Villains, a podcast produced by NerdSloth.com. If you had a good time, please just do us one little favor and share this episode or clip your favorite parts of the episode and share that with any friends, family, or on social media. And don't forget that you can impact our players and give them an edge by giving us a rating on Apple Podcasts, which translates in-game as Peril Points, which they can use to purchase special items, including weapons or gadgets crafted by our NerdSloth Patreon supporters. Many of the sound effects heard in the show were licensed from Sword Coast Soundscapes, so please visit swordcoastsoundscapes bandcamp.com to hear all of their amazing ambient and background audio productions. And also a huge thank you to Atalus Music for providing the villain's theme song, Drop the Beat, My Lord. You can find even more of his fantastic modern-day fantasy mixes on YouTube or SongTrader. Love y'all, and roll those 20s! Presented by NerdSloth. A place for lazy nerds. If you like what you heard, consider donating at patreon.com slash nerdsloth so we can continue bringing you quality shows. Be sure to also leave us a review and share your favorite episodes and clips on social media. If you're looking for more content, visit us at nerdsloth.com.